So we've been doing a research project on bears around Durango, um, trying to understand why bear-human conflicts are increasing, whether bears are changing their behavior, especially around human development, or whether the bear population has been increasing. We went out to the den of um, Bear 268. Uh, she was a five-year-old adult female bear. We've had her collared for three years. She's making a living in this little triangle of, of space, of kind of this natural ridge line that's surrounded on all sides by human development. Um, and she's try she uses mostly all natural foods. She's, she's definitely hit a few trash cans um, towards the end of the summer and the fall, but you know, 90% of the time she's eating natural foods. And so we went to her den to actually remove the collar because we're done with the study, so we wanted to take the collar off the bear, get all the data off the collar, and we wanted to see if she had cubs this year. Usually what we have is a sow will just hold her babies like this. Yeah. She'll just stay and she'll just protect them, and then we would just jab them in her arm. Her leaving, <laughs> she hasn't quite got the mothering down quite yet. But we'll bring her back, we'll work her. We're gonna have to work a little today. This is not what we expected, so we're gonna have to go up and get her and then bring her down. And I wanna get them warm. Oh, don't scratch your partner there, that's your sibling. But she was in great shape. Today she was 180 pounds. Um, she probably was more like 220 when she went into her den. And uh, that allowed her to have triplet cubs. Triplets for us is pretty rare. So she's, she was in great shape, a he really healthy bear, um, with a great view of Durango from her den, <laughs> looking right out over the city. We like to think of it as this is just a bad dream when we come check them in the winter that, you know, we drug them and by the time they wake up after that process, they're, they're in their den, it's quiet, it's dark, it's safe, and, and we're far away. Well, one of the things we've learned from our study is the perception that um, once a bear eats human food, it's always going to eat human food. And from tracking these bears with these collars, what we've learned is that that's not true at all. We see bears really tend to want to use natural foods. Um, but when you have a natural food failure, or you know, there's not much natural foods to be had, those bears know exactly where to come for a source of subsidy. Human development's really expanding in Colorado on the landscape. Um, there's not as many wild places for these bears to be but in good bear habitat. You know, bears recognize risk in town, but if there's not much food on the forest, they're willing to kind of accept that risk for that forage benefit. But if we can lock up the food and, and really minimize food access to bears, we could tip that balance where it's just not worth their while to come into town to forage. Yeah, so um, the cubs were pretty big. For the ones we've seen this last week, they were between five and a half and six pounds. We had two boys and a girl. Yeah, they were pretty darn cute. <laughs> pretty much like little living teddy bears. They're in great shape, healthy and big for this time of year for these cubs. This done work is pretty amazing. I mean, most of the time we just get to follow the bears on the computer. We get to see with the collars where they're going and how they're moving and using the landscape. But it's always a treat to see where they are, where they spend their winters, to go into that space, you know, to see how many babies they had, how those babies survive the next year. And, and um, yeah, just how these bears are living their lives in that like very close and intimate way.